everyone for joining us today for the Debbie Stream Foundation Curing Stomach Cancer Training Webinar for the 2017 Capitol Hill Advocacy Day. I am Mary Margaret Kilmeyer and I will be moderating today's webinar. I am the Program Director for Debbie Stream Foundation and in a moment I will introduce to you the President and Founder Debbie Zellman to provide an update on the Foundation. Then we will be joined by Camille Banta, our Advocacy Consultant, who will conduct the advocacy training. You will be able to ask questions throughout the presentation. You can type your questions into the white text box that appears on your screen. And at the conclusion of our presentation today, your questions will be answered by Camille Banta or Kristen Fitzgerald. If we are unable to answer all of the questions during the time allotted today, we will respond in an email to all advocates. In addition, we are recording this webinar today, and the recording will be posted for all advocates on our website. And I would now like to introduce the president and founder of Debbie Stream Foundation, Debbie Zellman. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for being here with us today. So um, I was diagnosed with stage 4 stomach cancer in April of 2008 when I was only 40 years old. Um, my kids were, twins were 10 and my little one was 3. I was married to a physician and still am and a practicing attorney. I had no risk factors for stomach cancer and my symptoms were very vague. And at the time I was told my chances of being alive in five years was only 4%. I've undergone harsh chemo and targeted treatments, radiation. Um, I think that eight recurrences over eight years is now probably nine recurrences over almost nine years and I am definitely still a patient. Um, next slide. So this just details the a lot of things that we've done. Um, a year after I was diagnosed, April 2009, I founded the organization and we are members of many, many organizations on a national level that help um, this disease and other diseases get recognized. Um, next slide. Our mission is as a 501c3 to raise awareness about stomach cancer advance funding for research, and provide education and support internationally to patients, families, and caregivers. And I think all of our ultimate goal is to make the cure for stomach cancer a reality. And you see the website listed there. I always direct people back to the website for all information that you might need. Next slide. Some of our milestones that we've achieved in just under eight years of existence I think are really extraordinary. We have 25 chapters in the United States, Canada, and Germany with events across the United States and Canada. Our patient resource education program that we call PrEP is free and available for anyone, including patients, families, and caregivers throughout the world. And it matches the inquirers with stomach cancer survivors and caregivers using very specific disease criteria. Also free, are our stomach cancer education symposia and webinars. Our website, as I referred to you before, is really just chock full of information. In-depth stomach cancer information, a lecture library, clinical trials information, and a matching service for clinical trials, a one-of-a-kind stomach cancer support community. We have blog topics and resources, and our website is translatable with Google Translate into 60 languages. Really incredible, um, we have now funded $650,000 towards stomach cancer research. And now I would like to direct you to our advocacy efforts. We held the very first Stomach Cancer Capital Hill Advocacy Day four years ago. This upcoming one that you're all registered for is our fifth one. We held the first ever Capitol Hill briefing and Capitol Hill receptions for stomach cancer. And something that is really groundbreaking um, is the $50 million Department of Defense research funding pot of money that we are now a part of solely because of the advocacy of Debbie Stream Foundation uh, stakeholders and people like you on this call. And specifically, for fiscal year 2015, that resulted in $5.8 million directed specifically to stomach cancer research. 
So I'm applauding you all right now um, because this effort is going to continue because of you. Next slide. Some other events I just want to mention um, before we go on to advocacy a little more are the webinars that we talked about. They will be from February to January, one a month, the Capitol Hill Advocacy Day, which you know about. And then we have free symposia in Los Angeles and in Hollywood, Florida. Los Angeles is March 18th, and Hollywood, Florida is April 29th. Something also very powerful is our gala. This will be our eighth gala. April 29th as well. So we have the symposium in the morning and the gala at night. And it's really incredible for, I think, um, everyone who travels here to see a room of five or 600 people gathered together for this cause. So I would encourage you that if you can attend, you should. Next slide. So back to advocacy. Monday the 27th through Tuesday the 28th, we need your voice. Um, you know, really, really important. I think when I was told we were going to D.C. for the first time, I thought, what's it going to matter if we go? It's just one voice. But for five years, hundreds of Debbie Stream gastric cancer advocates have traveled to Capitol Hill from across the country to ask Congress to invest more federal resources in stomach cancer research. So specifically, and I referred to this before, we asked Congress to include stomach cancer among those cancers eligible for research funding under, under the Department of Defense's peer review cancer research program. And we won. So the result is that more federal research dollars are being awarded to stomach cancer researchers, which definitely would not have happened without Debbie Stream advocates on the Hill meeting with their members of Congress. So there's still a need to do so much more. So we cannot be complacent which is why we need your participation in our 2017 Advocacy Day. Next slide. So here's a picture of some of our advocates. Um, I believe this was this past year. We were not snowed out this past year, which was good. <laughs> um, next slide. So just, I can't articulate this enough to you that your participation can help change the course of gastric cancer research in this country, and already has. But um, it's sort of like, you know, when you have a job and every year you have to ask for a raise, you have to keep going back and saying, do I get a bonus? Do I get a raise? You have to keep going back to Congress and saying, hey, we're still here. We still need you. And just because um, maybe you haven't heard from us in a few months doesn't mean we don't need you. And we have to keep reminding them that we're here, um, that we care, and that they should too, and that they should continue to fund stomach cancer research. So thank you for listening to, to me, and I will turn it over back over to Mary Margaret. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie, for that update and information. And so I'd like to go over our schedule for our time in Washington, D.C., and our itinerary. Our advocates will be arriving to D.C. on Monday morning. We will host a welcome lunch from 12 to 1, after which we will take the first of several group photos. And then that afternoon, we'll spend time in educational sessions together, including an in-depth training for new advocates. After our afternoon break, we will enjoy dinner together with another opportunity to talk to our uh, veteran advocates and consultants to get tips and training to prepare for the meetings on the Hill, which will be taking place on Tuesday, February 28th. After our breakfast at 7 o'clock in the morning, we will depart the hotel as a group and we will take another photo at the Capitol building. And then groups will attend their scheduled meetings between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. The meetings will be followed by a reception and a, re a celebratory dinner. And I just would like to acknowledge that throughout the two days that we will be in Washington, there will be a professional photographer and videographer from GDF who will be taking photos. So you should also bring your own camera and cell phone to take pictures of you with and without the members of congressional offices during your meetings and around DC. You should email your photos as soon as possible to events at debbiesdream.org so that we can share the great work that you're doing. Also, social media is a great place to post and share your photographs. Please be sure to tag Debbie's Dream Foundation using the hashtags that you see on the screen there. We will have a videographer coming to be filming. Oops. Sorry about that. 
We will have a videographer coming to be filming on Monday and Tuesday in addition. And if you feel comfortable, we may ask you to tell your story on camera, including what you brought to Advocacy Day um, and your involvement in Debbie's Dream. If you would like to be filmed and you know that in advance, please feel free to email us at events at debbiesdream.org. To participate in the Advocacy Day in the photography and videography, you must sign and return a media release to events at debbiesdream.org. These will be emailed to all advocates this week and are available on the Advocate Resource Center on our website, and you see the link for that website there. Okay, at this time, I would like to turn the presentation over to Camille Bonta, who is the Debbie Stream Foundation consultant from Summit Healthcare Consulting. Camille? Thank you so much, and thank you to everyone for joining today. Um, I want to thank you for being part of Debbie's Dream Foundation's advocacy efforts and, and for taking time away from your families and work to travel to Washington, D.C. Um, later this month. Next slide, please. Just to reiterate what Debbie said, you are the voice of stomach cancer. And when you go to the Hill on February 28th, you will be increasing awareness of stomach cancer through your own experiences. You'll be educating members of Congress and their staff about the lack of foundational knowledge about stomach cancer. And you're going to be asking for more research funding that can lead to better treatments and maybe someday a cure. Next slide. Hill meetings are being scheduled for you based upon your registration information. Your meeting schedules will be provided to you when you arrive in Washington, D.C. And you'll also receive background materials upon your arrival. These materials will assist you in preparing for and conducting your Hill meetings. Um, you should also be aware that an Advocate Resource Center has been created on the Debbie Stream Foundation website for you to access all of the Hill meeting materials in advance of your travels to Washington. Um, you can access, access the Resource Center from the home page. Uh, you can click through the upcoming events button and there you'll see the button for the Advocate Resource Center. And these materials, just so you know, are in the process of being updated. So check back in, um, next week for the updated materials. Uh, also, once you're in D.C., you're going to receive folders that have fact sheets and other materials that you will be um, given to provide to your congressional offices. And I just want to assure you that we'll be making plenty of extra folders for Capitol Hill in case you'd like to stop by other congressional offices other than those that you are scheduled to meet with um, from your state in, in between your scheduled visits. Next slide. So you might be wondering what to wear on your Hill visits if you've never done this before. Um, men are asked to wear a jacket, um, a long sleeve button down shirt and tie, and for women, uh, suit, pants, or skirt, or, or a dress. We just ask that you don't wear jeans and um, try to avoid anything like big belt buckles or large pieces of metal jewelry that might trigger um, the, the security screening. Um, it just basically follow the same rules as with airport screening. You just want to get through um, as quickly as possible. You're going to be there um, in February. It could be a little busy, so um, we want the lines to move through for security as quickly as possible. Um, if you're a veteran or active military, um, please consider either wearing a uniform or pins that designate as such um, to help um, us in our efforts to raise awareness about the link between stomach cancer and military service. Most importantly, wear comfortable shoes because I can guarantee you that you're going to be doing a lot of walking on Tuesday. Uh, you will receive a, a lapel pin to wear, and you'll also get um, pins to distribute to members of Congress and their staff. And lastly, uh, attendees are encouraged to wear periwinkle or any shade of blue and to avoid bright colors for your group photo on Capitol Hill on Tuesday morning. Next slide. So now we're going to move to the Hill meeting. Meeting with a member of Congress uh, does not need to be a stressful ordeal. Those of you who uh, have done this before know that it isn't. Um, and as long as you're well prepared and you know what you're going 
anything to say and can keep the, the discussion on message, um, you will be very successful in your Hill meeting. Again, it's very important to stay on message. And while members of Congress and their staff are genuinely concerned about their their constituents' views, they also don't like to commit to requests on the spot and may say everything and anything to avoid a commitment. So it's up for you to say a message and press your request, and you can do that politely yet very firmly. And when you sit down for your meeting with a, with a member of Congress or their congressional staffer, you're going to want to start by introducing yourself. You're going to want to make sure you say where you live and that you're visiting on behalf of Debbie Stream Foundation Curing Stomach Cancer. And if it's a repeat visit with a lawmaker or a congressional staffer, um, be sure to remind them that you have met before. Um, keep in mind that they meet with hundreds upon hundreds of constituents every year. And then after introduction, uh, you're going to explain what led you to becoming an advocate for stomach cancer research. Next slide. So before you state what action you want the member of Congress to take, it's important to take an opportunity to say thank you if and when it's appropriate. So included among the background materials that will be provided to you and posted online will be a list of lawmakers who have been helpful to Debbie Stream Foundation in the past. So when you're making your request, um, well, so you can refer to this list. And if your member of Congress um, is on that list, you just want to start off by saying, hey, you know, thank you for signing the peer review cancer research letter last year. Or thank you for signing the letter to the National Cancer Institute. We really appreciated your support. So when you go on to making the request, you're going to want to use facts and figures to make your point. But I don't want you to overwhelm the lawmaker or the staffer with too much data. You will have folders with fact sheets to provide to your congressional offices, which will be full of numbers and details. While you're face-to-face -face with the lawmaker or staffer, this is your opportunity to make a connection. It's your opportunity to use your experience as the tool of persuasion. This is why we have advocacy days. Next slide. So make sure before you end your meeting that you try to close the deal. So you're going to ask the member of Congress or the staffer if he or she will support your request. And if they can't give you an on-the-spot answer, um, please let them know that you'll be following up. Um, and in, you, know, you will get some offices where they can make a commitment um, right then and there when you're in the room with them. More often than not, the commitment comes after the meeting. So that's why the follow-up. Uh, is really important and just be prepared that it may not just be one email or phone call after your meeting. It could be three or four um, to, to get an answer. And lastly and most importantly, remember to say thank you. Um, make sure that they have your contact uh, information and offer to be a resource to them. Next slide. So for this year's Advocacy Day, we're going to have two primary requests. Uh, as Debbie mentioned, first we're going to be asking members of Congress to support maintaining the inclusion of stomach cancer in the Department of Defense's peer review cancer research program. And you're going to do this by asking the member of Congress to sign a letter to the Appropriations Committee with the request or to make the request directly to the committee. And this letter, it'll, it'll be in the folders. It's going to be led again this year by Congresswoman uh, Lois Frankel and Congresswoman um, Leanna ross Layton. Uh, they're both from Florida, Republican and a Democrat. And in the House, the, the Senate letter is going to again be led by Senator Hirono. Um, these letters are, are um, being reviewed um, by the congressional offices. They are just about finalized, and as soon as they are, uh, we will be sure to uh, post them to the Online Resource Center as well. And I just want to back up real quick. Um, so we ask the lawmaker to sign on to the letter. And oftentimes, um, either an office will have a policy that they don't sign on to these letters, or they may sit on the Appropriations Committee and may um, not um, sign on to these types of letters as a product of being on the committee. Um, this is where it's really important to say, I understand you can't sign on to the letter, but I would like you to include it 
among your individual requests. Okay, next slide. So you may find that you need to give lawmakers and staff um, a brief overview of the peer review cancer research program. Most of the offices that you meet with, particularly if you've met with them before, they're going to be familiar with the program. There are new members of Congress. There are new staffers. So you may need to do a little bit of education. So you may want to start off by asking, are you familiar with the program? Um, if they are not, um, it's an opportunity to do a little bit of education. So the, pro the program is run through the Department of Defense and it's the Peer Review Cancer Research Program is under the umbrella of the Congressional Directed Medical Research Program. And the Peer Review Cancer Research Program was first funded by Congress in 2009, and it supports research into specific cancers um, as designated by Congress. And um, these, these cancers um, typically have um, some uh, relevance to military service members um, and certainly also extension um, to their families. And the program tends to support high-risk, high-reward research and complements uh, NIH research. Next slide. So over the last few years, there's been a significant increase in the amount of funding appropriated by Congress to the Peer Review Cancer Research Program. And in fact, the program's budget doubled from fiscal year 2014 to fiscal year 2015, where we saw a funding level of $50 million. And as Debbie mentioned, thanks to our collective efforts, Summit Cancer was first included as eligible for research funding in fiscal year 2015 and resulted in $5.8 million in research dollars for stomach cancer. So stomach cancer is going to be remain eligible in fiscal year 2016. Um, you will be heading to Capitol Hill with no action on the fiscal year 2017 bills. They will still be outstanding. And as you know, the fiscal year starts on October 1st. So the most likely scenario is that Congress is going to pass a continuing resolution for the remainder of the 2017 fiscal year, um, which ends on September 30th. Um, we are going to be monitoring the debate to make sure that funding for the peer review cancer research program is not jeopardized by a continuing resolution. And we will be prepared to modify our message on Capitol Hill if necessary. Um, under a continuing resolution scenario, it is unlikely that the program will receive any increase. So you see here on the slide that the Senate um, request was $60 million, so a $10 million increase. And the House request was $30 million, which has been their request over the previous years, and the Senate level has prevailed. So if there is a continuing resolution, the, the key will be holding on to the, to the $15 million that was um, appropriated to the program in 2016. So we're unlikely to, to see an increase um, for the 2017 fiscal year. Next slide. We have been able to make a very persuasive case for why stomach cancer should be included in the peer review cancer research program. Stomach cancer is a malignancy that has been recognized by the Department of, of Veteran Affairs as presumed to be service-connected based on hazardous exposure to ionizing radiation. But more significantly, research studies have shown that US soldiers living under field conditions may be at greater risk of H. pylori infections. And this is significant because, as you probably all know, H. pylori is a primary identified cause of stomach cancer. Next slide. Your other ask on Capitol Hill is going to be to ask lawmakers to encourage the National Cancer Institute to develop a scientific framework for stomach cancer. And the request to the NCI will be in the form of report language to the Labor, Health and Human Services, and Education Spending Bill. And we're going to have more details for you as the Advocacy Day approaches, specifically whether or not there's going to be a sign-on letter like the Peer Review Cancer Research Program letter, or whether we'll be providing lawmakers with the report language and asking them to include the language among their individual appropriations requests. Next slide. Now, I assume that most of you are familiar with the National Cancer Institute, but briefly, it is one of 27 institutes and centers at the National Institutes of Health. 
And Debbie's Dream Foundation has been working to increase its visibility with the National Cancer Institute and to encourage the advancement of knowledge gained through the Cancer Genome Atlas um, through the dedication of additional research funding. And while you can read through the fact sheets and other information provided on the Advocate Resource Center, I just want to take a few moments to cover a few key statistics. Um, and these will be the, the statistics that I would suggest that, that you want to um, present to your members of Congress and staff when you're sitting in the room with them. And in 2017, this year, it is estimated that uh, about 28,000 Americans will be diagnosed with stomach cancer, and uh, nearly 11,000 will die from the disease. About 80% of patients are asymptomatic during their early stages of stomach cancer, and this leads to late diagnosis. And we all know that at a late diagnosis, at a stage four diagnosis, the survival rates are um, less favorable. So the five-year survival rate is 5%. Um, and the overall five-year survival rate is 30%. It's, Im it's important beyond these statistics to also emphasize that the incidence rates of stomach cancer um, in those particularly in whites aged 25 to 39 um, have increased um, substantially over the last few several decades. Um, and this data is significant because the expected frequency of stomach cancer overall has declined over the past 80 years. So, you know, those who just look at the statistics and see the decline, um, you know, may not be looking um, at at the at the at the rates at a, in a more detailed um, level. And this is what we'd like you to point out to them to say there are some increases in certain populations and there's not a really good understanding of why this is happening. Um, for those of you who have attended Capitol Hill meetings in the past, um, I am sure that you can attest to the fact that most Capitol Hill staffers and members of Congress know very little about this disease and, and many think it's a disease that only occurs in older populations. So um, this will be part of your task in your Hill meetings, and that is to do some education. Next slide. When you share the need for increased stomach cancer research funding through the National Cancer Institute, um, it's important to explain that per cancer death, stomach cancer continues to receive among the least um, amounts of federal research dollars of any cancer. And without a targeted research investment in stomach cancer, researchers cannot compete against more well-established cancers for a limited pot of money. And, and the downstream effect is that researchers, cancer research, don't want to go into the field of stomach cancer. And um, this does not um, bode well um, for the discovery of um, new and more effective treatments. Next slide. So you have some homework between now and when you travel to, to DC. Um, next slide, please. I would suggest that um, you draft a script which can be um, it can be your, your survivor story or your, your stomach cancer story um, that we have asked you to um, complete for us for the, the packets that we're going to leave on Capitol Hill. Um, you should review the advocacy day materials and the talking points. And again, all of this is going to be posted online. And when it's updated, um, we can send out a notice to all of you um, to, to uh, direct you to that website. Take just a little bit of time before you come to Washington to read about your members of Congress. So there might be, you might be visiting some offices of, of newly elected lawmakers. Um, you can access their information very easily um, by going to www.house.gov or senate.gov. And you can, there's a pull down bar, you can find your member of Congress, and um, there is, you can look at their biography, you can look at what committees they sit on. Um, just take a few minutes to familiarize yourself with the um, office that you're going to be meeting with. 
if you have Debbie's Dream Foundation business cards, please bring them. If not, um, you know, you know, you, general business cards will be provided to you upon your arrival, and you can put your information on it. Or if you have business cards, bring them with you. Um, just something so you can pass along your contact information. Um, I'm going to reiterate once again: um, comfort over fashion. You know. Please be sure to wear comfortable shoes. You are going to do a lot of walking around on Tuesday. And I want you to get excited about joining your fellow advocates on Capitol Hill um, and um, being prepared to uh, get the message out and, and to make a, a difference in this disease. And as mentioned previously, we're going to encourage you to tweet and to post. You're going to get suggested posts um, that um, will also be available on the Advocate Resource Centers, and um, we want you um, to to include photos and um, and to, to share um, your journey uh, to Washington D.C. Uh, with others. And with that, I think I am just going to go ahead and turn it back over to Mary Margaret. Okay, thank you so much, Camille, for that presentation and information. We will use the remaining part of our time today to go over any questions that were submitted during the webinar. So I wanted to um, start by asking about the scheduling of meetings. So when do advocates find out how, when they're going to be meeting with and who they're going to be meeting with? So thank you for that question. It's a good question. Um, the, the meeting scheduling process has begun. It started um, at, at the beginning of January. And we will be giving you your schedules when you arrive um, in Washington, DC. And the reason why we wait to give you the schedules is because um, the, the schedules almost always are still in a state of flux um, right up until um, the the actual day on the hill and so if you if you have any specific questions um, you you are more than um, you should feel more than free to email um, um, staff at, at Debbie Stream Foundation or you should have my email address you can email me directly and and I will be happy um, to answer any questions that you may have um, but everyone is going to be scheduled um, with both of their Senate offices you're also going to be scheduled with um, the office um, of your representative now let's say there is a group of you from Ohio and um, you know, one of you has a member of Congress that's different from um, the other advocates uh, member of Congress. What we're going to try to do in as much as possible is have you go to all of the meetings together um, as a, an, a group from Ohio on that day. So you may be meeting with representatives who are um, not your representative, but maybe another advocate's representative. So we are going to do everything we can to make sure that you have a full day, right? We know that you are, you know, spending, you know, your both your your time and your financial resources to travel to DC. So our objective is, is to make sure that your day on the hill is as um, full and worthwhile as possible. And the other thing that we're going to be doing is we'll be scheduling some targeted meetings, including those with um, committee members. And so we will, um, you know, we will plug some of you in on some of those meetings as well. So um, I can assure you that, that you will all have um, um, busy days on the 28th. Great. Thank you, Camille. Um, the next question is about the survivor story. Can you talk a little bit about how much information should be included in those when they're due by and um, how long they should be? Sure. So I would love to have everyone's story um, by Monday. Um, what the 
the document that I sent to everyone um, last week, I believe it was, was the um, packet of, of stories from last year. And I think that those are a pretty good rule of thumb um, with respect to length. Um, keep in mind that you know we, you know we are not looking for this to be a 30-page book that we leave on on Capitol Hill. Um, keep them as succinct as possible. I think that the the, the a key thing to keep in mind when drafting your story is is to write it in such a way that reinforces what our ask and our messages are on Capitol Hill, right? Why do we need more research funding? Why, you know, why, you know, what your experience has been in, in terms of the availability of treatments. And so um, I would write them um, uh, keeping in mind um, that these stories are supposed to reinforce our key messages and our requests at Capitol Hill. But it would be a, a super great help um, for everyone to get those stories in, um, DDF staff need to make copies and get them shipped to DC, um, and that all needs to occur next week. So we ask for your cooperation uh, in that regard. If you participated last year and you gave me a story and I don't hear from you, um, I will just use the story from last year. Okay, great. The next question is also about um, meetings. Now, we talked quite a bit today about scheduled meetings, but you also mentioned unscheduled meetings where, we, where advocates could drop in on offices. Can you talk about what the appropriate way to do that is and who, how they could go, how advocates can go about doing that? Yeah, sure. So um, we know that um, that sometimes you have time in between your meeting. And so we'll make extra packets. And if you want to uh, stop by an office that you are not scheduled to meet with, then um, what I would encourage you to do is, so you're going you're gonna to walk into the office, or there are going to be um, individuals um, sitting in the front office. You will um, explain that you're in town, um, you are from, you know, X state, and that you are representing W Stream Foundation for curing stomach cancer, and you can ask whether or not the um, the healthcare um, staffer, the healthcare legislative assistant, um, might have a couple minutes um, just to to step out into the in lobby, um, so you can have a few words uh, with them about um, the need for stomach cancer research. Um, it is sometimes you'll be surprised and the somebody will come out to greet you. Um, more often than not, um, what's going to happen is uh, somebody on an impromptu basis is not going to be available to meet with you. So in that case, what I would do is I would take the folder, I would take your card, you could write a quick note and um, leave it with a person in the front office and ask that they give it to the healthcare staffer and ask for the contact information of the person that will be receiving the folder, right? So you'll get a card or they'll write it down for you. And then when you go home, you can follow up and say, I stopped by your office. Um, I didn't have a meeting with you, but I wanted to share this information with you. And here is what we're asking for. And and I will I will say that um, you know Christy and, and and Tony Leonard and and others have been really super great about going to um, offices unscheduled, and and we have picked up um, uh, new supporters as a result of those unscheduled visits. Now I'm not saying that everyone needs to do it, but if you find yourself with free time. Um, then you know maybe you know take a take a look at the list and say okay whose office do I want to stop by do I have some remote connection to that office you know my so and so knows so and so I'm just going to pop in there and I'm going to try to use whatever connection I have to maybe get you know some time with somebody in the office so um, you know I I do in encourage you using your your downtime um, in that manner um, I I know it's a tiring day up there and you just may want to you know, rest your 
get rest your feet for a while in between meetings. But like I said, we'll have packets for you um, uh, to do that if you if you like. Okay, great. Thank you. So I have now read through all of the questions that were submitted during our presentation. But if you do have any additional questions after we conclude, or if you are listening to the recorded version and would like to submit a question, please send it by email to our events manager, Candy Osman, or our events coordinator, Jill Friedman, at events at debbiestream.org. Jill and Candy will be your points of contact for the Advocacy Day event. I would like to thank all of our participants for joining us today and for committing to travel to Washington for this important event. Thank you so much to our speakers, Camille Banza and Debbie Zellman, and thank you to Debbie's Dream Foundation president, president and founder. We are looking forward to seeing everyone in Washington and hearing from you in between now and our event later this month. Thank you for joining us today.